they're, in, they're insignificant. All you basically want to do is think about the good shots. And when you actually come away from the, 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 uh, the golf course, you want to spend some time, again, mentally rehearsing the good shots. And, uh, you know, and the whole idea is that you basically want to uh, rehearse the good shots in, in order to get really good at controlling your emotional states. If you look at people like Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods has been trained in this from a, a young boy. And if you look at Tiger Woods, uh, in fact, I read somewhere, I can't remember where I read it, but basically what he says is, and we'll get onto the automation in a minute, he says that whenever he comes off a, from a game, he can't remember anything. It's basically an autopilot. Because you, it's true, you cannot play good golf. If you think about it, uh, whenever you hit a good shot, and then you hit another good shot, and you go, I can't believe I've hit two good shots, I'll try and do it again. The minute you say, I'll try and do it again, the minute you s switch from the autopilot allowing it to happen to actually trying to do it, it's like a light switch, you'll not be able to do it again. And the question is, you have to ask yourself, are you playing to win a game or are you playing not to lose? And generally that's what happens. What happens is, you think, you know, I don't want to mess up this next shot because that was such a good shot, I don't want to mess this up. And if I was to say to you right now, don't think of a blue tree, what's everybody thinking of? A blue tree. And that's because your mind can't actually process a negative. So the question that uh, you have to ask yourself is, am I actually playing to win or am I playing not to lose? And in generally what people do is they play not to lose. Tyson, uh, it was only about six months ago, and it really surprised me because what he actually said was, the minute he walks into the, the room and he sees the, the boxing ring in the distance, he's absolutely racked with fear. He says his legs are like jelly, and he imagines all the things that can go wrong in the ring. However, the closer he gets to that ring, this feeling starts to subside until when he actually gets into the ring, he actually feels like a god, he feels he's invincible. And basically what's happened over a period of time, all these powerful resources, beliefs, feelings and all that kind of stuff has been anchored to the ring. And we all know what happened to Tyson when his mentor died because that's where the anchor uh, it got buried with his mentor and he fell to bits. And, th and, that, and that's exactly what you do with the first tee, but you do it in reverse. You're looking forward to your game of golf, but the closer you get to the first tee with the crowd, it's the exact same happen. But instead of getting the positive, powerful resources, you get all the negative stuff. You get all the anxiety, the fear. I don't want to mess this up. These are the sort of things that start to run through your brain. And guess what happens? Nine times out of ten, you either mess it up or you never play to your, 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 your full potential. And it's exactly the same as what Tyson did, but it's in reverse. And another thing, because uh, I, I was a big fan of boxing, another huge uh, hero of mine was Muhammad Ali. And you can still find this on YouTube. It's a interview that he did with uh, Parkinson and he talks about when he fought George Foreman and um, people used to say he was a, a, a psychological um, mind master and he, put, he actually put fear into his opponents but he says it had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with fear. What he says was he would get George Foreman into a ring and he would whisper in his ear, he would call him a big sissy, a big girl, all that kind of stuff and really what he was doing is he was making them angry so that then they tried to beat him and it's the same thing, the minute they tried they are well at their uh, performance, so they couldn't get access to the best shots. Their cerebral activity was switched off, so they couldn't do any strategy. And they, he just wore them doing, and then he picked them off. So he had this, uh, I don't know if he, how he knew this, if he actually studied it or he had a, a, an instinct about it, but he knew about this performance zone thing. He knew that if he could push somebody outside the performance zone, he could pick them off. And it was nothing to do with fear, it was to move somebody from being... Um, uh, you know, in the performance zone to a place of trying and once he do, knew, knew that he could pick them off. 